his men from the east went through the world with a sense of wonder, constantly asking, what does this mean? Does it point beyond itself? And where will it take us if we follow it? I got home uh, just before midnight last night. I'd been in Cambridge um, uh, as a guest of the prestigious Faraday Institute. Now, if you don't know about the Faraday Institute, they, they focus on uh, bringing together science and faith. And some months ago on the show I do on Premier Christian Radio, I, in, I interviewed a lady called Ruth Bankovitz on a book she'd written. And she'd had a couple of really poor interviews before it with interviewers who hadn't even read the book. I'd read the book and I asked one or two sensible questions and she was quite impressed by that. So she invited me to go to Cambridge yesterday to speak to a, a group of young scientists, all oh, PhDs, all, oh, you know, got brains the size of planets. Uh, but she wanted somebody to give them a bit of training on how to react when they're asked to do a radio interview. It was a wonderful day because these, these guys are scientists. They are captivated by the wonder of the world, the complexity of it. And unlike many people think, that has not led them away from God. It has brought within them a sense of awe, a sense of saying, for goodness sake, is it possible that all of this happened by some kind of cosmic accident? And every one of them would say this, science does not prove the existence of God. You cannot prove the existence of God. Even as a believer, you cannot prove the existence of God. It's really interesting that in the whole of Scripture, 66 books, there is not one passage that sets out to prove the existence of God. You cannot prove the most important things. I cannot prove that Margaret loves me, but for goodness sake, I can give you evidence. She's still here after 53 years. <clears throat> And these scientists would say to me, it's, it's not proof, but it's evidence. It brings you to the fact that, yes, faith is a leap, but in the leap in the dark. In fact, I think logically and sensibly, it's actually harder to be an atheist than be a believer. And the other problem with being an atheist, you know when you wake up on a sunny day, remember sunny days? And when the sun is shining, if you're an atheist... You've got nobody to thank. 